Hello everyone. So today we will talk about microservices and in particular microservice architecture. And uh, microservices is uh, yet another new term on the crowded streets of uh, software architecture. Many people or projects uh, use this style in the uh, last few years and the results of using microservices or microservice architecture has been so far positive uh, so much so that uh, it has becoming now the default style for uh, building enterprise applications the term microservice was discussed in a workshop uh, of software architect to describe what uh, the participants saw as a common architectural style that many of them had already been exploring and then in 2012 uh, the same group uh, decided on a name and then they came up with this name called uh, microservices and uh, today we will provide a brief introduction on the microservice architecture So what is microservices or what is microservice architecture? Uh, the microservice architecture uh, is, a, is an approach, is an approach for uh, defining your architecture based on uh, fine-grained uh, services and it enables uh, the rapid, frequent and reliable delivery of large and complex applications. It also enables uh, the organizations to evolve uh, its technology stack very quickly. The microservice architecture is not a silver bullet. It has also several drawbacks. Moreover, uh, when using this architecture, there are numerous issues that you must address. Uh, among the benefits, uh, microservices are highly maintainable and testable. It's, they are easy to maintain and test. They are very loosely coupled, so they are not strongly dependent on each other. You can deploy them uh, individually and uh, organizations usually uh, build their business solutions based on the business capabilities of these uh, microservice, uh, microservices. When we are talking about uh, microservices, obviously, uh, it has evolved uh, from some existing method of software development or application development. So to start explaining the applications, uh, uh, to start explaining the microservice style, it will be useful to compare it to the monolithic style. Um, a monolithic application uh, is built usually as a single unit. Enterprise applications are often built in uh, three main parts uh, it has a client or client side user interface let's say you have uh, html pages or javascript running in a browser it also have a database uh, consisting of many tables and uh, uh, this database can be of different types including relational or non-relational and it might also have a server side application uh, this server side application is completely monolithic uh, because it it, uh, it develops and executes your business logics and any changes to the system uh, involve building and deploying a new version uh, of the or, or the whole new version of the server side application so such a monolithic server uh, is a natural way to ap to approach building such a system because you cannot uh, build your uh, business logics that are strongly uh, related as uh, separate entities and all your logic uh, for handling a user request usually run in the same process or in, or in a single process that allows you to use the basic features of your uh, programming languages let's say and uh, in some programming languages, they support uh, classes, functions, uh, even uh, namespaces, namespaces or packages. So depending on the programming language, 
it's always uh, or it's most of the time easy to develop your server side applications as a uh, monolithic uh, system monolithic ap applications uh, can be successful uh, they were su successful in the past but increasingly people are feeling frustrations with them uh, especially as more applications are being deployed on the cloud uh, change cycles uh, are tied together meaning that uh, they are rapidly changing and uh, you need to integrate and deploy uh, quickly uh, very frequently sometimes changes can be very small so there are many challenges so over time it's hard to it's often hard to keep a good modular structure and make uh, this makes it harder to keep changes uh, that uh, that are affecting only one module let's say and uh, this type of challenges or frustrations and also uh, scaling requires scaling of the entire application rather than parts of it that require greater uh, resources for monolithic application so in uh, to avoid these challenges or to uh, mitigate these frustrations uh, developers and engineers uh, uh, came up with this microservice architectural style where uh, building applications as suites of services as well as the fact that services are independently deployable scalable uh, each service also provide a firm modular boundary so each service is dedicated to only one job and it also allow different services to be written in different programming languages whereas in monolithic applications you might end up uh, heavily dependent upon uh, one specific programming language and also a, a good part of uh, microservice architecture is that this can be uh, the services in this architecture can be managed by different teams so different teams can work on uh, different services at the same time without overlapping each other's uh, task or responsibilities microservice architecture can also be seen as a pattern in other words a design pattern uh, let's say you, you have a context where you need to develop a, a server-side enterprise application and it must, it must support uh, diverse, different types of client uh, it might uh, expose its API uh, to third parties uh, so that uh, other people can consume your services uh, you might integrate your application with other applications uh, you might accept user request and at the end you might return a response uh, in various formats so given this uh, context or this uh, problem uh, context what can be the solution or what can be the best solution uh, when you are thinking about the solution obviously there will be uh, multiple sources that will uh, work to decide which solution you want for example usually there are developers who work on, on multiple tasks or multiple developers one on one unit or one module and to make it easy uh, for the developers uh, so that they don't overlap uh, with, each other, with each other's responsibility uh, there is a team uh, who, uh, of, of developers who can basically dedicate themselves uh, or, on multiple service if you have a well modularized uh, service based architecture and also if you have small modules uh, the new team members can quickly uh, known to the system existing system and they can be more productive and they also uh, so there are also other concerns like continuous integration, continuous deployment, continuous delivery and so on, uh, which are also uh, core in today's uh, uh, fast world, uh, fast software development world. Uh, also when you are thinking about technologies, 
Uh, as you know, the technologies are ev evolving very quickly. So new frameworks, new languages, new database technologies are coming every year, if not every, every six months. So if you develop your services or, 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 or components uh, as a smallest, smaller module, it will be easier to maintain and uh, handle them in future. So given this context and given this uh, uh, problem with considering the force, these forces, um, the solution can be uh, to define an architecture uh, that structures the application as a set of loosely coupled uh, collaborative services. And each service should be highly maintainable and testable. Uh, each service also or the, all the services also should be loosely coupled with other services and they should be uh, independently, independently uh, deployable. Uh, all, all these features are, are enabled in uh, microservice or microservice architecture and, and thus uh, microservice architecture as a pattern is a good approach uh, today uh, if you want to build an, an enterprise application. So here is an example. Um, let's imagine that you are building an e-commerce application that takes order from customers, uh, verifies inventory and available credit and ships them. The application con may consist of uh, several components, including the uh, storefront UI, which implements the user interface, along with some uh, backend services for checking credit, uh, maintaining inventory, and uh, shipping orders. Uh, obviously, this application, if implemented as a microservice architecture, will have a set of services with uh, individual, very specific responsibilities or tasks. But implementing them, uh, implementing a system as a microservice architecture will have some uh, benefits uh, and uh, drawbacks. Uh, benefits, as we mentioned earlier, improved maintainability, better testability, uh, better deployability, and it also enables uh, the developer to organize the development effort around multiple but autonomous teams. So it makes the development easy. Uh, these are obvious uh, since you are developing and testing and maintaining fine-grained uh, uh, modules which are known as microservices and then given these uh, benefits you also have some uh, drawbacks uh, that uh, that you might or some challenges that you might face when 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 developing those uh, microservices uh, so um, among those drawbacks, the, one of the major problem is developers must deal with the additional complexity of creating a distributed systems. Uh, and we know if we have uh, uh, smaller uh, services, uh, multiple services that are uh, required to fulfill a higher level of goals, you will need uh, many more services, uh, many more such smaller services. And this makes the, or this, this adds some additional complexity to the overall uh, design of the system. And also, uh, it makes the deployment a uh, little bit uh, harder. And uh, since you are more services running uh, at the same time uh, when you are choosing a, a microservice architecture, that means each service is individually. Uh, consuming a memory as well as power. So you are basically consuming more memory and more power. But uh, in today's days, as you can, as you know, uh, with the cloud technology, uh, memory and power is not an issue. So uh, in that case, uh, we can minimize uh, some of the drawbacks of uh, microservice architecture using the cloud technology. For, for example, Amazon EC2. So there are some uh, uh, 
characteristics uh, of microservices based on which it was proposed initially, but also um, after their after the uh, acceptance of microservice architecture, uh, we can uh, even get more benefits uh, uh, in that in that line. So there is no formal definition. Also, uh, I I did I did not mention there is no formal definition for uh, microservice architecture, but uh, we can attempt to describe what we see uh, as a set of uh, common uh, characteristics for architectures that uh, fit well to this microservice architecture. And uh, in particular, basically, uh, uh, here we are not laying down or by strongly binding any characteristics to the microservice architecture, but uh, we can generally assume that these characteristics uh, fit well to microservice architecture. So let's go through each of them uh, individually uh, to give you a more um, insights. So the first characteristics that fit well microservice architecture is component componentization. So microservices are thought or considered as a components. So it, you can think of it as a component-based systems where components are uh, rather considered as a small services. So they are uh, uh, individually deployable and if you have an application that consists of uh, multiple uh, uh, components uh, running under a single process, a change to any single component result uh, in having to redeploy the entire application, right? But if the application is com uh, decomposed of uh, multiple services and uh, you can expect many single service changes uh, to only uh, to only require the service to be deployed. So in other words, um, if you implement your systems uh, as a set of components running under one process, uh, if you want to change and uh, make any modifications, uh, that entire application need to be modified and redeployed because they are running under the same process. But if you uh, have an application uh, that have uh, multiple services uh, running uh, under different processes and that are loosely coupled, that might be uh, deployed in different uh, locations, in different servers then you don't need to bother about other services and think about or focus on only one service that has the problem or that want to be uh, uh, modified or uh, maintained or make some changes so another consequences of uh, another consequence of using service services as component is a more explicit component interface so most languages do not have a good mechanism for defining an explicit interface. Often it's only doc, uh, documentation and the discipline that prevents clients uh, breaking a component encapsulation. And this leads to a overly tight coupling between components that also microservice architecture does not uh, support. Thus, uh, services make it easier to avoid this uh, using explicit remote call mechanism. Uh, in microservice, microservice architecture, uh, the services are organized around business capabilities. So when looking to split a large application into parts, often management focuses on the technology layer leading to UI teams, uh, server-side logic teams, uh, database teams, and so on. When teams are separated along this line, even simple changes can lead to a cross-team project uh, taking time and uh, more budget. A small team will optimize around this and uh, plump, uh, plump for the lesser of the two evils, meaning that just force the logic into whichever application they have access to. 
So logic anywhere in around, in other words. So you have logics in uh, client side, you have logics in the server side, you have logics in the database side also. And this is an example also of uh, Conway's law. So this, uh, this says uh, any, organization, any organization that designs a system uh, will produce a design whose structure is a copy of the organizational communication structure. <clears throat> In other words, the microservice approach to division is different splitting up two services um, organized around business capability. Such services take a uh, broad stack implementation of software uh, for that business area, including user interface, uh, persistent, persistent storage, and any external collaboration. And conse uh, consequently, the teams are uh, cross-functional and, uh, and uh, including the range of skills that are required for the development like user experience, database and project management. So microservice architecture uh, goes uh, uh, with the organization and their, and the, and their business uh, plans and development and capabilities pretty well. Uh, you can think about your software as a product or your software development also as a project. So most application development efforts that we see use a project model where the aim is to deliver some piece of software which is then considered to be completed. On completion, the software is handled over, uh, handed over to maintenance team and the project team that built, uh, built this software is no longer responsible for the project, let's say. Whereas, microservices uh, uh, tend to uh, follow another model uh, uh, and by, by another model I mean uh, Amazon follows a, a popular notion that uh, you build you run it, where a development te team uh, takes full responsibility for the software in production, and this brings developers into day-to-day -day contact with how their software behaves in production and increases contact with their users and so on. In other words, uh, in the traditional approach, the development team and maintenance team uh, work separately, whereas uh, in the microservice approach, uh, the, the developers are closely uh, working with the maintainers or most, in most cases developers are the maintainers, so they know their users very well. There is another uh, notion or, or characteristics uh, related to microservice like when building communication structures between different processes we have seen many products and approaches that stress putting significant uh, smart or intelligence uh, or efforts into communication mechanism itself if a good example of this is the enterprise service bus or esb where esb products often include sophisticated um, facilities for messaging, message, message routing, uh, choreography, transformation, applying business rules, and so on. So when we talk about microservices, a, co a common question is uh, whether this is just service-oriented architecture or SOA that we saw a decade ago or even earlier. This is uh, a merit uh, to this point because the microservice style is very similar to what uh, some advocates of SOA have been in favor of. Uh, the problem is that SOA means uh, too many different things. Uh, it refers to too many stuff uh, that most of the time uh, that we come across uh, something called SOA is uh, significantly different to the style than the, uh, than the concept we are describing here, the microservices, due to the focus on ESB uh, in the case of SOA uh, too much and uh, this is also an example of 
these ESBs or enterprise uh, uh, service buses are also an example of uh, monolithic application. Uh, the microservice community focus or likes, uh, likes an alternative approach that is called smart endpoints or dump pipes. In other words, application um, uh, built from microservices aim to be a, as decoupled as and as cohesive as possible. Uh, their um, own domain logic and act more as filters in the classical Unix sense, uh, receiving a request, applying logic as appropriate and produce a response. It's, so it's a classical uh, web application uh, uh, technique or idea where users send a request, the server process the request and sends a, re uh, a response uh, using the HTTP uh, or web. Then uh, the decentralized governance, this is another benefits of microservices architecture. And one of the consequences of decent of uh, one of the consequences of centralized governance is the tendency to standardize on single technology platforms. So uh, not every problem is a nail and not every solution is a hammer. And uh, we need to uh, consider each problem differently and the solution to each of the problem could be different. Uh, perhaps the uh, one of the examples again uh, for de decentralized governance is uh, Amazon's build it run it uh, paradigm uh, where teams are responsible for all aspects of the uh, software they build including the operating of the software or maintaining the software 24 by 7 and devolution of this level of responsibility is definitely not the norm but we do see more and more companies pushing responsibility to the development teams uh, netflix is also another example uh, that adopted uh, this decentralized governance approach because netflix is also using microservices Apart from the decentralized governance, there is another uh, common characteristics for microservices that is decentralized data management. Since we have in the monolithic applications, we have all the services under the same process. They are accessing the same database and uh, supporting or serving the same sets of users. In contrast, uh, uh, in the microservices, each service might be deployed in different locations. They might be access to, uh, accessing to different databases, but at the end, they are serving the same sets of uh, users, uh, no matter wherever you are in the world, uh, regardless of your geographic locations. So decentralizing responsibility for data across multi-services has implications for managing updates also like uh, the common approach to dealing with updates has been to use transactions to guarantee the consistency and this is also mainly because your databases are distributed your services are distributed this brings more challenges uh, to uh, maintain the consistency between those uh, databases and uh, uh, if you do not uh, provide the consistency, the, you, you will not properly serve your uh, end users. And then uh, mac using microservice follow, uh, provides uh, a lot of automation uh, for in infrastructure. So uh, infrastructure automation techniques have evolved over the last year uh, heavily. The evolution of, uh, of the cloud and AWS in particular has reduced uh, the operational complexity of building, deploying and uh, operating microservices. So the pipeline is there. All you need is just to uh, 
write your code and it will be right away uh, deployed and in, in it will be in operation without many hassles uh, on your shoulder. So many of the products or systems uh, being built with microservices are uh, being built by teams with extens extensive experience on continuous delivery and continuous integration. And uh, since this is not an uh, uh, lecture on continuous uh, integration and continuous delivery, we will not provide further details, but uh, know that uh, microservices architecture are completely aligned with these two uh, known and popular concepts. Microservices are also designed for failure. So failures are easy to handle in the context of microservice architecture. And a, consequences of, uh, a consequence of using services as component is that applications need to be designed so that they can tolerate the failure of services. Uh, since services can uh, fail anytime uh, due to unavailability of supplier or servers, the client has to respond to this as gracefully as possible. And uh, the consequence is that microservice teams constantly reflect on how service failures affect the user experience. So there is a transparent, uh, transparent, transparent uh, behavior between the server side and the client side. And the clients or users are never uh, put in, in dark uh, uh, when the services are out or the servers are down. Uh, since also services can fail anytime, it's important to be able to detect the failure as quickly as possible and uh, automate the restore, uh, uh, restoring the service. And microservice applications put a lot of emphasis on real-time monitoring uh, to uh, facilitate those uh, operations. And the last thing that we wanted to discuss is uh, evolutionary design uh, being microservices uh, loosely coupled uh, uh, but highly cohesive. Uh, their uh, evolution uh, is uh, and quick and easy meaning that uh, you can pick a, a service, any service, and then uh, modify or change it uh, without affecting uh, other services. So microservice practitioners usually, usually come from an evolutionary de design background and see uh, service decomposition as a further tool to enable application developers to control changes in their applications during uh, uh, without slowing down the change and change control does not necessarily mean change reduction uh, with the right tools you can make uh, frequent fast and when con well controlled changes uh, to your applications and uh, as i mentioned putting components into services adds an opportunity to, uh, opportunity for more granular release planning and uh, with a rather instead with a uh, monolithic uh, application uh, any changes require a full build and full deployment of the entire application uh, which is not the case for uh, microservices uh, that was it uh, i wanted to share uh, my views on microservice architecture. Uh, I will also provide some reading materials uh, so that you can uh, uh, have uh, further information. Thank you.